It really doesn't feel real that it's 1.57 in the morning and I'm awake working on different things for school and such. And it's January 26th, a day that, not an in infamy, but a day that I'm going to remember forever. Um, most of my, most if not all of my videos are usually scripted. This is not one of them. This is... Anything I say kind of goes. Um, 365 days. A full year. A full rotation around the sun. And it still feels like it happened 20 minutes ago. I remember the day vividly that Kobe died. I remember I was um, in the other part, in the other side of Jersey. So not the part I live on. With So it was a little bit of a drive. New Jersey's not that big though. So it wasn't really. Um... And I went to go see my grandmother, who at the time was battling cancer. She actually beat it since then, but we were not very optimistic at the time, as she had till Christmas. She made it a month after. We were seeing it as a blessing, but, you know, we we weren't very optimistic of her beating cancer at the time. But she did, because she's a badass. That's what I'll say about that. But I remember I was in the back seat, and my sister was next to me, my grandmother was in front of me, and my dad was driving. And I get, like, three texts at the same time. One is from my mom, one's from my mom's boyfriend, and one's from, like, it wasn't a text. It was, like, a a TMZ report was blown up on Twitter. And I was like, oh, let me see what this is. I can just remember my jaw, like, dropping, just just falling. And I was like, no, it can't be true. It can't, it literally can't be true. I was freaking out. I went, you know, Kobe Bryant just died. And there were, I remember my dad, who is is a sports fan, but like, you know, he's not the biggest sports fan in the world. Even my dad was shocked. My grandmother knew who Kobe Bryant was. She still listens to Elvis Daily. My sister d- didn't care, but that's my sister for you. You'll meet her one day. But, you know, I just remember being in total shock, like, as a Knicks fan, I've always loved Kobe, not because he torched the Knicks every time he played, but because you can't not respect Kobe. Before this, Kobe was one of my favorite players, and I, I still won't call him my favorite player because, you know, I feel like that'd be kind of a disservice to him, and he wouldn't want it because just because he died. So, But he has, and I've said this on multiple occasions, the greatest worth work ethic of all time, NBA history, possibly... I don't know. I'm not going to say it, like, officially. Possibly the greatest work ethic of any athlete ever. The Mamba stories, you know, that sometimes they're dragged a little bit out there, but a lot of the time they're true. Like, it's just, it baffles me that this dude loved basketball more than anything besides, of course, his family. And just acknowledging Kobe's death today wouldn't really be fair you have to mention Gigi, which it's just like, I still, that part, I don't think about Gigi a lot because that part kills me. Kobe Bryant dying, I'm not fine with by any means. But if it were, if it were my choice, like, the if some hypothetical was made up where I had to pick between Kobe and Gigi, I know Kobe would want me to pick Gigi. And also, I would pick Gigi. Gigi is, as of right now, the only person in the family that played basketball. Um, she was just electric in everything she did. People would go up to Kobe and say, oh, you need to have a boy to play basketball. And she would go, he doesn't need a boy, I'm right here. And, you know, leaving behind a mother and two sisters, I believe. I think she has an older sister. And there was a, at the time, this baby was just born a few months earlier. So that baby's about a year and so, oh, I mean, obviously, it's over a year old, but, you know, so much was going to happen for Gigi. Like, she she didn't even get to go to prom. She never really got to live a average high school life. It's just, she didn't get to go to college. She didn't get to drive, like, and it was just taken away in an instant. And there was also, of course, you can't not mention... The friend's family. Of course, I I didn't do any research for this. I kind of just grabbed my phone and started recording. 
I don't know the names of the victims that died. I could look it up and act like I know what I'm talking about. But this is me. Full transparency. I'm not going to lie to you. It's 2 in the morning. I'm tired. That's no excuse. I could I could have made this in the morning. But, you know, it's 2 in the morning. I'm tired. But I thought I'd make a video about it. You know, put some Kobe highlights. Put some Kobe pictures I really like up in here. I don't know. But, um, you know, 2020 was tough on all of us especially with the pandemic, the wildfires at the start of the year. I remember that really well before the Kobe death. I remember that was the biggest thing happening. You know, politics, I wouldn't even bring up what side, anything. It's just politics ripped a lot of people in half this year. And, of course, you know, more sports deaths. None, none as crazy as Kobe's. I'll say it. None as crazy as Kobe's. But the other day we lost Hank Aaron. Not a sports death. We lost Larry King the other day. We lost Casey Jones earlier in the year. We lost, besides that, we lost a lot of baseball lives. It's very odd to me that, like, so many Hall of Famers have died in the last, like, two, three months in baseball. But today's going to be a big day in the, in the basketball world, you know. I'm expecting some Kobe tributes, honestly, um, whether it be high school to even the NBA. We've seen people play inspired because of Kobe. We saw the Lakers win a championship because of Kobe. And it sucks. And I wish, I wish the pandemic happened a year later. Because the parade in Los Angeles with the Los Angeles Lakers the year Kobe died. It's unimaginable. They would have had, I mean, possibly. They would have possibly had Vanessa there at the front of it. And they would have had, it's just, it's so sad. But, you know, it's, it's almost poetic that one of the toughest years in the world, hit not world history, but you know, anyone watching this lifetime, as of right now, most likely, I'm not going to judge you on your past years. But it's kind of, it's kind of poetic that the toughest year Kobe died, because it's almost like, not that he would have wanted it, because I don't think Kobe would have wanted him or his daughter to die. But it's like they say, God tries, is tough on good people, or God tries good people, tough people, something like that, I don't know. But, you know, it's just, Kobe would, <laughs> Kobe would die on the, in the toughest year in my existence, but it made us all stronger, it made us all love people a little bit more. I can't wait for this pandemic to be over because I can't wait to start hugging people again. And I just can't see, wait to see what's next with me. But that's all, guys. Everybody stay safe. Everybody have a good one. Uh, check out my Instagram, Twitter, everything. Link below. Quality media. I work for Daquan Young. Sell out sports. I run their TikTok. I do everything, guys. Nah, I'm just kidding. Rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. Rest in peace, Gigi. Good luck, Capri. That's all, guys. Everybody have a good one. Everybody stay safe. That's all. Peace out.